And as we start to consider digital practices, I think it's important for us to consider why exactly we need to talk about this in the first place. Does the technology actually have an impact on what it means to do learning, to get information to people, to does it actually change what it means to learn? And I think that's something we all have to come to in our own way. I would certainly argue that the learning process changes, that what it means to learn, that what we need to get out of learning is different. But let's just go over how technology has impacted the learning process in the past and see if we can find some clues in there, that some ways at least to start conversations amongst ourselves to be able to start to approach this idea of digital practices. So when we go back to the idea of people talking to people as the absolute primary way in which we look at learning. I mean, I'd prefer to have somebody who really knows what they're talking about come together with me, talk to me about it, guide me through that process. This is a map of the journey that Julius Caesar took in 62 BCE to go and find Apollonius Molin on the Isle of Rhodes, the absolute best person to teach you how to be a public speaker at a time when public speaking was the absolute thing you needed to do. Rhetoric was everything. Cicero went to the same guy. On this journey, Julius Caesar was caught by pirates. He went back and killed those pirates off later because Julius Caesar. The point being, though, it was super difficult to get to the learning place, to the place where you'd actually get another person to talk to you. Because it's not like you could just find anybody in your hometown. He left the biggest city, the most populous, or close enough to the most populous city in the world to go to another place to find somebody to teach him how to do this. So when you want to go have one person teach one person. It can be really, really effective, but there's no technological aid there. There's nothing else to, to help you scale that up. When we go to 1229. This is from a flyer at the University of Toulouse that's trying to advertise at the University of Paris to get students to come to Toulouse. But I want you to take a look at a couple of words in here that really give you a sense of how the technology impacts the learning process. So here it says, those who wish to scrutinize the bosom of nature to the inmost can hear the books of Aristotle. Hear the books. So somebody stood in front of a classroom and read out from the scrolls, probably, what Aristotle had written down 1,500 years before, 1,700 years before. Um, those were on vellum often. So it was 2,000 or 200 calves skinned and pressed and polished their skins to be able to make a book. We're talking about something that's very, very expensive. We're talking about a process that takes a very long time and also a process that, that writes a lot of errors into it as they get copied by often by a monk from one copy of Aristotle to another. Incredibly expensive, but at least you don't have to, well, in this case, take a time machine, but go to another island to go find someone to talk to. You can have someone read off the thoughts of somebody else. So the technology here is helpful, but it's still pretty pretty much of an impediment. We fly forward another 500 years, all of a sudden we've got the printing press. You can copy that stuff off really quickly. We're not putting stuff on cap skins anymore. We're putting it on paper, right? It's a huge advantage. Pestalozzi wanted to teach the whole uh, country of Switzerland how to read. So what's he do? He doesn't have the teachers to do that process. He builds a textbook. So he prints on paper this process where you sort of turn a page from one page to another and then somebody who maybe doesn't even understand the material they're teaching can follow along with the student or with a group of students and potentially teach those people the things inside that book. It's a really effective way of spreading information compared to the calfskin, compared to the walking around. Um, but still, as it says here, I assert definitely that a school book is only as good when an uninstructed schoolmaster can use it at need, almost as one as an instructed one. We've got a pretty limited version of learning here. Uh, from our, our standpoint today, but still an incredible step forward for what they were trying to do. And if you see every step in this process, the technology opens up a new window. It opens up a new possibility. So then the question becomes, given this new possibility that's been opened to us, given the fact that information is a million times, the number's not relevant, an unbelievable time, more access, uh, more accessible for people now than it would have been 30 years ago. How does that change what it means to learn? How does that change what we do as educators? How does that change what we do as an educational system? How does that change what we do with information? And that's the thought that I want us to start out with when we consider digital practices. And uh, I look forward to talking to you all about it as we go along. Cheers.